Hello my fellow gods and goddesses, welcome back to my channel, my name is Heather and today we are doing a Pacific Northwest haul. Before we get started, I just want to thank Natasha from My Reading is Odd for inspiring this look today. She posted her mini year freakout tag and with her yellow hair and like the teal eyeshadow, I was so inspired. Unfortunately, I don't have kick-ass neon yellow hair like she does, but I have this yellow dress. So, you know, we work with what we have. So recently, I just got back from my trip to the Pacific Northwest. I went to Seattle, Vancouver, British Columbia, Victoria, British Columbia, and also Portland, Oregon. So I got a ton of stuff. I got a ton of books. I got a little extra goodies that I'm going to show you guys and yeah we're just gonna get into it. So I'm first going to talk about the other random stuff uh, before I get into the books. The first thing I got is from Crescent Moon Gifts in Tacoma, Washington. This is my one of my favorite stores of all time. I go here every single time I visit Seattle because it is just the most beautiful spiritual store that I have ever been to. They have this tea room that I've talked about on my channel before where it's just basically the concept of Starry Night in a room and it's just so beautiful. I just got a couple things. The first being this little statue of Clyde. Clyde is an Oceanid who was basically in love with Helios, the Titan god of the sun, but he didn't you know, reciprocate her love. So she basically starved herself uh, and just stood in a field until she got turned into a sunflower. So, you know, this is just a symbol of unrequited love, which is kind of depressing when you think about it, but she's so pretty that I don't even care. We're not, right now, we're just gonna put her right here. And then uh, the next thing I got is what I'm wearing right now. This is a vintage dress from Red Light Clothing Exchange in Portland, Oregon, which is my favorite clothing store of all time. The first time I went there was last summer when I took a trip to Oregon, and it is so beautiful in there they like it's it's kind of like a vintage store but it's not as expensive as most vintage stores are i just want to buy everything when i go there uh i contained myself i only got this little 60s style dress maybe i can show it for you guys i can't see my camera so i don't know what you guys are looking at right now but she's cute she's very jetson and i really love it i'm more of a 70s kind of gal but i love yellow so i couldn't refuse. The next three things are technically I got when I got home but I figured I would just include this in this haul because I want to talk about them and I want to talk about my boyfriend because I never miss an opportunity to do that. During my trip was actually my boyfriend and I's six month anniversary and he got me a couple things. The first thing he got me was this little Geralt pop from The Witcher. I love The Witcher if you guys don't know. It's one of my favorite game series of all time and and I wanted him so bad. Look at he's got a little ponytail in the back. Oh my god, he is so cute. And then, actually, just today, uh, he bought me a little Siri um, E3 exclusive edition. And she glows in the dark, which is pretty sick. I'm really excited to have them next to each other. It's gonna be so cute. And then going into the books now, he got me Darkwood by Gabby Hutchinson Crouch. If you don't know what this book is about by now, I don't know where you've been in the recent videos because I praise this so much. Darkwood is a middle grade. It is kind of a fairy tale retelling. It takes place in this village where Hansel and Gretel live and in this world the huntsmen are kind of the overarching rulers of everybody and they have banned witchcraft. However, Gretel is thus accused of witchcraft and she is banished to the Darkwood and the Darkwood is just this mysterious forest that everybody has kind of been taught to avoid at all costs but in the dark wood she ends up meeting a cast of other fairy tale characters and they kind of protect the dark wood as well as Gretel's village. I love this book so so much. It is a Monty Python Shrek 
esque kind of world. The humor is absolutely amazing. The themes in here, there's a lot of feminist uh, themes. I just can't recommend this enough. This is just a really great time and I love it so much. There's also hints at a slow burn female female romance in here which is amazing and I'm just I, I just really need more people to read this book and love it because it is golden. Now that we have all that out of the way, we are going to get into the actual books of this haul. I got myself quite a few from thrifting and I also went to Powell's, which I found out is the largest bookstore in the world and which is not surprising because it's ginormous if you've ever been to Powell's but I was so honored to be able to relatively easily go to the largest bookstore in the world like that's pretty awesome. The first book I'm going to talk about is really exciting because it has become my favorite cover of all time and that's quite high praise because of so there are so many just beautiful covers out in the world but that is the paperback edition of The Wrath and the Dawn. I really hope the camera can pick up how vibrant this is. The reds and the contrast of the blue and plus like the shiny gold reflection. I honestly cannot stop staring at this book. I've had it just like by my bed because I never want it to leave my sight. The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier is, is a Thousand Nights retelling. The Thousand Nights is surrounding this woman whose husband comes to her every night and I think he was like he like plans to murder her or something but in, if she can continue to s tell him stories he won't kill her. We love the patriarchy, don't we? But I know Haley from Haley and Bookland really loves this. Daria from Full of Lit really loves this. So I hope I like it. And even if I don't, I'm keeping this cover forever. The next book I got is Uprooted by Na Naomi Novik. This is another fairy tale retelling. I don't know what fairy tale it is. I, at least I think it's a fairy tale retelling. I could be pulling that out of my ass, but I'm pretty sure her other book, Spinning Silver, is a fairy tale retelling too. It's high fantasy, I believe. Um, I really don't know anything about this. I think it's quite polarizing, but other than that, I really, I really just recognize the cover. I saw it for $2.99 at Value Village and I picked it up. By the way, if you have a Value Village where you live, I hate you with every fiber of my being because I'm so green with envy because it was amazing. There were so many books in there. <sighs> Bless. The next two books are a part of a trilogy and that is The Subtle Night the Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman and The Amber Glass by Philip Pullman. Second and third book of the His Dark Materials trilogy, which is The Golden Compass. I have The Golden Compass up there. I'm not going to get it because I'm lazy, but I'm so happy I found these because these are the prettiest covers of the trilogy and I found Golden Compass in this cover and I was like, there's no way I'm going to find the other two in a thrift store. Value Village just proved me wrong and I'm so glad they did. I don't know when I'm going to get to this trilogy. I know the TV show is coming out soon so I'll probably binge it before I watch that but I love I love these covers because they're like constellations and y'all already know I'm an astro ho. The next book I got at Value Village is Illuminate by Jamie Kaufman. Jamie Kaufman? I just combined their names. Illuminate Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I know you guys are thinking like other mm, didn't you say you were weren't going to uh, continue that trilogy because there's a trope in here that you despise. And all I have to say to you is I didn't ask for you to be so loud, so you need to quiet down. In my defense, I really want to read this physically because just flipping through the pages gives me so much more, um, not inspiration, but like desire to read this again. This takes place in this planet where like illegal shit has been going on and our two main characters have had to fled because the planet gets attacked by the government and so they had to flee in this like re these refugee ships and there's this AI guy who's real sketch and there's just some government conspiracies going on and you're following these two main characters as they're like 
corresponding to each other and you're kind of uncovering the mystery of what's going on. That was a terrible synopsis, but honestly, I am not the person to give a synopsis of this book because it was very confusing. But hopefully, if I read it physically, I will enjoy it more and kind of get more out of the story. Now, the next book, I'm so excited to have my own copy of, and that is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Cousteau. I'm so happy to have this in my hands right now. Do you guys li literally know anything about me? You know that. Say it with me, everybody. Favorite book of 2018. To Kill a Kingdom is a Little Mermaid retelling following our main character, Lyra. She is a siren. She is the daughter of the Siren Queen. Lyra herself uh, has a liking to um, royal hearts, specifically the hearts of princes and her mom is a, a bit of a power hungry greedy little hoe so when Lyra starts getting a little greedy herself with these hearts and a accumulating these hearts and thus increasing her power. Her mom basically banishes her, turns her into a human, and if she doesn't get the heart of this legendary siren killer, she's not going to be able to come home. Banter in this is so good. Prince Elian, who is our like Prince Eric character, is just I love, if you're a pirate, I automatically fall in love with you. That's just how it is. Same with mermaids. If you're a mermaid slash siren, automatically gonna fall in love with you. And a romance between a pirate and a siren, I know it's cliche, but it's the best fucking cliche ever. It's not groundbreaking in any way, but it's a siren pirate romance. Which, uh, by the way, if you got any recommendations for a pirate siren romance book, just let me know in the comments down below asking for a friend. Thank you! The next book I got is a very exciting book, and that is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. Now, this is the first time I'm mentioning this book on my channel because I actually listened to the audiobook for this during my trip and I haven't actually, you know, told you guys about this, but this book is... Oh my gosh, I can't even really talk about it. This is gonna be such a mess. Emergency Contact follows our two main characters, Penny and Sam, and they are just a pair of very cynical, pessimistic people. Penny is the roommate of his step-niece kind of scenario, and she actually finds him in the midst of a panic attack, uh, just in the, in the street somewhere, and so she kind of works him through it. She takes him home and all that stuff, and they become each other's emergency contacts, and they basically just form this relationship over text. They just, they see each other a few times, but for the most part, their relationship is completely formed via text message, love and relate to them more than I have related to any other character ever. Not necessarily in like their backstory or who they are, but more like their personality and how they see the world. It just, I felt so seen reading this. Penny especially, uh, Sam not so much, but Penny especially is extremely judgmental but she's not judgmental in like a bitchy way it's really hard to describe she just hates everything and everyone she's very introverted she just doesn't trust people and she doesn't trust people's actions so she's just very guarded she's just extremely guarded even with her mother i just related so much to them and they have become my favorite couple of all time even more dare i say it than Rose and Dimitri. I know, who am I anymore? Please delete my channel. I don't deserve to be here anymore. I know that this has complete mixed reviews on booktube, which I understand because like I said, they're very unlikable characters, especially Penny. She's just very judgmental, but she's not judgmental in a butchy way. I can't stress that enough. She's just very critical of things, okay? If you are a super positive person or a super optimistic person, this definitely isn't really the book for you because I feel like you won't resonate with the characters as much, 
but if you are a cynical ass bitch like myself I feel like you would really really adore this book if you're an introvert I feel like you would really adore this book their relationship is just very relatable and just I felt so seen reading this book and this I've been talking about this for a while but I just I really really want to drive this home for you guys because it is absolutely amazing. I will forever be thankful to Monty from It's Monty for pushing this so hard because I would have never picked it up without his recommendations. Also, gorgeous cover. This is just the hall of stunning covers because while I was at Powell's, I found the hardback of the dividers. I don't know what edition this is. I don't know if it's just considered the backlisted edition. The complete comparison of this versus the new covers is criminal. That is the biggest crime in the book community. Not the racism, not the exclusion of anything but white fantasy. It's this. So I'm going to be super surprised if you don't know what The Diviners is about because this is quite a popular series, but The Diviners follows a wide cast of characters, diverse characters as well, so we love that. But our main girl is Evie O'Neill and she comes from this rural place in middle America. I think it's like Ohio or something doesn't really matter but she is kind of this party girl and she gets in trouble for doing some stuff and flapping her gums too much to the wrong people and her parents basically have to send her off to live with her uncle in New York which is just the perfect punishment for a party girl just send her off to the city what could go wrong and her uncle is actually a very important character because he runs this occult museum so he is very much um, studies in the occult there are these series of murders going on in New York at this time and they are very occult-esque so he and Evie of course because she can't mind her business. Evie O'Neill is 100% a Leo by the way and you can argue with me but you'll be wrong. She kind of gets in that business. This is very creepy. There's like ghosts and hauntings and stuff and there are magical powers. Evie has these abilities that you learn about and anyways this book is stunning. Look at how beautiful this is. Oh and it gets so much better. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Girl, look at that. Oh, look at that. I'm so happy I have this. One of my most beautiful purchases. 100% of this year. And finally, my last book I have is another one of my favorite covers of all time. This has been a favorite for so many years, and that is the collector's edition of Clockwork Princess. I knew I needed the collector's edition as soon as I realized that it has the little family tree Clockwork Princess. It's just part of the Infernal Devices, which is one of my favorite trilogies, if not my favorite trilogy of all time. This was actually my favorite book for ever until I read Song of Achilles. So the freaking special 10th anniversary edition of Clockwork Angel just dropped and I didn't think I needed it but I think I need it. And then the final thing I'm just going to show you guys is I got this tote bag. This is a little High Priestess uh, tarot card, but in the fashion of the reader. I love it so, so much. I love tarot cards. I love tarot reading and I am a reader. So this is kind of perfect for me. All right, you guys. So that is the end of this video. Comment down below if you live in the Pacific Northwest and or want to visit because it's the most beautiful place in the United States in my opinion. My vlog for my trip should be going up soon. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.